Hey everybody, welcome to Red vs. Blue Let's Play, uh, the weekly 11.30 a.m. Wednesday Eastern Standard Time um, cybersecurity simulation platform. I'm Jerry Ozier. Clint Boat Dungeon is going to be joining us in just a minute. And every week we run through the Red vs. Blue cybersecurity simulator, putting a different bend on it. And this week's no exception. I'll be operating as the blue team, CISO operator, and we will be implementing the Australian Security Directorate Essential 8. This is the Australian government's guidance for organizations in Australia on how to best approach cybersecurity, resiliency, and information security program. Let's bring Clint in real quick to say what's up, Clint. Clint, how are you doing today? You ready to rock and roll with the Australian 8? Look at it's like we almost planned that. That like you said, ready to rock and roll, and I already had my hands up. Like I just read your mind, uh, but I'm I'm ready to watch you test out this standard. Um, I find that this is a really interesting feature that you helped us emerge that I didn't realize was even capable with Red versus Blue. Was literally being able to test industry standards to see how they hold up against an adversary. And yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get into it, everybody. Awesome. So if you're going to join us in chat, that is fantastic. Let's let's uh, we won't be doing the chat overlay today. But um, well, Clint's here. He's he's a lead dev lead dev and CEO of ThreatGen, so he'll be engaging with chat while I'm playing. Let's um, get right in here and get started with this baby. Be playing as the blue team. Let's go for a mid-size organization, the pipeline company, and let's start the game. And if you're new to ThreatGen um, in the red versus blue platform. You can be the blue team and defend from an active adversary attacker who's attacking your organization, or you can be on the active adversary side. I mean, excuse me, you can be on the red team side and have an active defender uh, AI defending and stopping you. So it's a great platform for playing if you really enjoy cybersecurity as a practice and also a great platform for learning. And like I said, today we will be the blue team. Uh, the, the winning conditions for the blue team are to outlast the opponent uh, have them thrown in jail or eliminating all vulnerabilities. Because we are testing a security framework today, my goal is going to be uh, to, to outlast the red team defender. Now, if they get thrown in jail because of this framework, that's fantastic. But for me, I'm looking for robust robustness, resilience, and a, a, a program that can be matured. So let's get into it. All right, so let's start the turn. Now, the very first thing that we all have to be on the same page with is what exactly is the Australian 8? Now, it's going to take me a minute, Clint, because the um, the my attachment is bringing it in sideways. So that's not going to be good. <laughs> so let me, let me see if I can share a different way. Oh, yeah. If you guys go ahead and Google um, the Essential 8 maturity model, you will see what exactly that is now give me one minute while i try to bring this in um give me actually what let me play my first turn right okay so the essential model is broken up in a very kind of interesting way like it's it's not about a, a maturable cybersecurity framework with the mindset of left of boom and right of boom very very similar to the uh nist cybersecurity framework it's actually um, it's actually quite, quite different. So we'll take a look at that as soon as I dig in here. Now we are looking at my network topology that I am responsible for protecting. Let's go ahead and throw ourselves on the side, Clint. Okay. So this is our, our environment. You can see our $50,000 budget that we've been given by the board and our three, uh, analysts that we have at, um, to, to work with. Now, let me move our participants' names so you can see um, the icons down here allow you to quick jump to certain things. And then the action tree shows us um, our abilities that we can do. Green is something we can do, and blue is not available yet because you have to unlock stuff. Now, if you just believe me for a second, I will tell you that the Essential uh, 8 model 
has eight key areas, application control, pat, uh, patching, configuring Microsoft Office, et cetera. I'm going to do application control as my first one. So let's take a look at what we can do from an application control perspective. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and do policies and procedures because that is um, going to define some standards on what we need to do um, with the applications and with everything else. So that's a pretty standard one. We'll do that. Now, let me look at, I'm wondering, we have one more resource left and I'm wondering if we need to do um, asset inventory or um, gateway firewall. So looking at the essential eight one more time, application control requires you to have uh, a list of all your workstations, uh, softwares installed and stuff like that. So I'm actually gonna go on a limb and say that that actually is asset inventory. So give me one second, let's do this. Okay. So I'm gonna end my turn, let my dogs out the room and then see if I can't get uh, a graphic of the essential eight for you guys to digest. Clint, any thoughts on that initial first move? It just, it really depends on kind of what you think the adversary is doing. And then in the real world, this goes back to um, threat intelligence, right? You, you, if you think that they're the, the, you're a target for more of a physical attack, then you would want to go for more physical stuff. If you think you're a target for a uh, cyber attack, you would want to do more social engineering stuff and everything like that. So, um, you know, when it comes to just following the standard though, I mean, yeah, let's just see how it works out because as we saw with the, the, the CIS 18, we were able to determine that while it worked in the long run, it would have been more efficient if some of those would have been reordered in priority. Mm hmm. So true. So I, I've I've um, <laughs> I've got the graphic here that we're going to be able to uh, use essential eight controls. OK, how come we have 18 in the US and in Australia, they only have eight? Well, uh, if you follow the, um, <laughs> according to the guidance that I see, um, their idea is that it's easier for businesses of any size to implement these simple eight things. And I, <laughs> I, yeah, and I studied this uh, in order to be able to do today's stream. And I actually have some pretty strong opinions on this particular uh, framework. Uh, and it's, it's, I mean, it's not old. It's relatively new, like in the last five years, from what I can tell. But it, there are some serious shortcomings with it. And y like you'll see in a second here. Whoops. I mean, I could take a NIST standard, which is thousands of requirements, and then distill it down and basically say and combine a bunch of them and say, hey, look, we only have 21 requirements to meet this NIST standard. But if you dig down into it, it's like a thousand requirements condensed into a bunch of combined ones i know that's a that's a far-fetched example and it's a cheesy mm -hmm. way to do it but my point is if you have a lot of content and a lot of requirements baked into like a single line item it's not any better exactly exactly and we see this with 800 171 as well so our resources are still committed right now and they're working so we don't really have anything we can do except wait and I've got what what looks like going to be a really good way to share this with everybody in just a second. All right, let's do that. Big spenders, we're mm -hmm. we're, we're springing for the we're finally springing for the 1080p. We got off the cheap wagon. Yeah, can you guys chat? Can you tell a difference in quality? I'd be really curious um, if you can. Are they are they saying that in chat, Clint? Somebody said Oops. that Rock in the 1080p um, looked better. So, um, I yep. mean, definitely, you can definitely accentuate all of our uh, our flaws. Uh, you know, not that you have many, <laughs> Jerry, but I'm 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 oh, a very please. flawed profile. Uh, but there's there's more of me, more of me to look at. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Both Simply Cyber and ThreatGen upgraded their streams to be able to do uh, 1080p. Uh, so. Definitely excited about that. I'm, I'm about to pull up this um, this, this graphic for everybody. Simon says yeah. we look sharp. Thank you, Simon. Little Simon, ZZ top there. Chat. 
Hmm? What was your question it? for Simon? Uh, well, Simon started a new job. I wanted to know how it was going. Oh, he, yeah. You know? All right, let me see about this. Sorry, guys, that we're doing this like upside your face, but um, the the platform was a little less friendly for us um, when we when we started to go live. Tech demo gods reality. Okay, cool. Here, let's check this out, Clint. Come on, fuck be a lady. Fuck. Here we go. Be a lady tonight. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. Okay, guys, this is the Australian 8, okay? Australian Security Directorate 8. And you can see that it goes one through eight, but my belief is that this is not designed to be incremental, although I will be implementing it in an incremental fashion just to have some logic to it. Um, they have three different maturity levels and each level of maturity is based on kind of the threat model of the organization. So if you're targeting maturity level one, you're mostly being targeted by like commodity malware. You don't have APTs coming at you. Obviously the increased level of maturity, the the increased level of cost, focus, resources, et cetera, in, in order to achieve that. So my first observation, we have 40 seconds before the next one. My first observation, way to go, Australia. But here's my thing. Nothing, there's nothing in here that has to do with right of boom. This is all preventative controls. So, well, and no if, we, if you talk about controls, yeah, I mean, while preventative measures can be a quote unquote control, if you're talking strictly about controls, this is correct. Yeah. But it just, I feel like it's, it's short sighted, right? If an organization yeah. achieves maturity level two, and they feel like they're hot, you know, the hotness, and then they get their they get breached. They're going to be like, well, what, what, how, yeah. And I was happen? speaking strictly of semantics, uh, not saying one's right or wrong. By the way, that thing reminds me of a trivia game, like you were going to spin the wheel and get categories or <laughs> or something, or wheel of fortune or something with the colors. So we've completed our asset inventory and policies and procedures. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are. Um, fans uh, or members of the Simply Cyber community, I have an entire soundboard just for Threat Gen Red versus Blue Let's Play games, including um, you know, obviously we've got Mario coins, right? And then um, Chun-Li laughing, like when when the threat actor, the, my adversary, does something silly. I'm a crypto evangelist. Wait, hold I on. love it, love it, love it. That is not the right one. I'm sorry, y'all. You got your sticky that notes girl's... mixed up. Yeah, that's okay. Anyways, Ch Chun Li is in here, and I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, so let's look at what our next moves are here. As soon as I get my Chun Li, there she is. <laughs> there we go, Chun Li. Okay, so let's look at our directory eight again. We have our three resources back. Um, we're still kind of focusing on application whitelisting and patching applications. So let's see what the the tree does. Now, here here's the thing, guys. Where none of this says firewalls, none of this is network security. Okay. This is very much endpoint security. And that's another gross shortcoming of this application, of this framework. I am going to take a little bit of liberties uh, in that um, application hardening would be we'll add some network layer controls at that level because it would technically harden the application and not have threat actors just banging on it but are we 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 are not going to be having oh thank you uh Thavisha. essentially it is a mess well i'll tell you what my initial thoughts was uh, very critical of this framework i've already outlined the detection controls are missing i've outlined there's no network security controls. I wouldn't implement this in my environment if I was responsible. So let's look at our, our tree. Two-factor auth, which is called out here, right? So two-factor auth is way up here, control seven. So we're not going to get to that for a while. Oh, by the way, nothing here says anything about educating your end users. Oh. Okay. So 
this this framework is going to get dominated. If you look at their cybersecurity guide, they have a NIST style framework. They are just supposed to be the basic controls that everyone should implement. Yeah, thanks, Chad. So, Chad, are you saying that the Australian Security Directorate has additional framework but beyond the Essential Eight, or you're saying that the Essential Eight is is supposed to be the basics, and then your the the guidance you're talking about goes into greater detail on how to do them do them better? Because like right now. Guys, application whitelisting. Let's see if we can like. Hold on. Um, we don't have application whoops. whitelisting implemented in our. Um, oh, that's something we need. Yeah. We should implement application whitelisting in red versus yep. blue. We don't have that. Shame on us. Shame. 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 It's a hard. Shame. It's a hard control, but it's a good one. Shame. So I'm gonna say <laughs> for. Application whitelisting. I mean, SDLC maybe, um, ICS uh, certification. Yeah. So we'll do a couple of these. So let's do uh, ICS vendor certification because I feel like that that's a whitelisting kind of thing. Um, and harden RDP. So we'll say harden RDP. So we're only whitelisting certain RDP solutions. Okay. And there we go. And any other relative ones to application whitelisting? Um, yeah, I would say you, uh, you got those reverse. Well, it's okay. I guess you can't have reverse. You're allowed. Um, I see what you're doing. But yeah, application hardening, I think, is going to be the closest to application whitelisting. Oh, I see. So I did harden RDP. Yeah, I mean, it's a little confusing. Um, I don't know. Hard I mean, RDP is yeah, specific to RDP. Yeah, no, I know. But I mean, I'm trying to, um, I'm doing my best to kind of shoehorn these. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. People aren't seeing this. I'm doing my best to shoehorn these controls into the essential eight categories. Yeah. So um, application whitelisting. Would we call a sim? No, it would be argument? in game, according to the function of the game. When you do the individual system hardening, that would be the equivalent of uh, the closest we have in red versus blue to application whitelisting, um, and 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 I like that because application whitelisting is based off of individual systems, individual assets. So for right now, your application whitelisting is going to be hardening the system. Unfortunately, you can't actually harden the system in red versus blue until after you've done a vulnerability assessment. Yeah. So you're restricted by and the I game see, mechanics right now. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and install Sim because we're going to have to be doing restrict admin privileges, which is like default creds and stuff, and some application hardening. So even though the framework does not say um, SecOps type work, uh, in order to achieve the goals that we have, we have to do that as a kind of uh, ground floor stuff. So let's do that. We've we've done our um, We've done our um, our three engineers, so you know we'll see what they do. Let's get our coins. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. Shame, shame. There's something for the soundboard. Shame. Have Quentin ring a bell and yell shame. Oh, okay, that's actually shame. a good idea. Oh wait, wait, but are we talking about the Game of Thrones version or the Peter Griffin version? Because I'm doing the Peter Griffin version. Shame. Yeah. Shame. I think we might have to have a couple shame buzzers. The one from Game of Thrones and you. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the recommendation, Matthew. Recent squad member, too, I might add. <laughs> All right. So let's check it out. We've got one resource. Um, we're still kind of doing the whitelisting stuff. I feel like we've got that. We need to patch, but we can't unlock that until we finish our sim stuff, I believe, right? So. Let's do ICS safe testing methods also. Since I'm, I'm th I feel like that's kind of going to allow us to patch applications, right? So again, it's it's really <laughs> it's really um, the, the the front work the front work of being able to patch the application. We can't patch ICS stuff unless we. Um, unless we do a safe testing method, right? So we can we can ensure that we're 
not breaking it when yeah. we're patching it. Yeah. Okay. So let's end the turn. How's chat going? I'll take a minute and look at chat. Somebody said this. Oh, is a it's the signals directorate. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Hold on. Let me bring this in. I've been I saying it wrong. It? Thanks, Ross. I brought it on stream. Okay. It's the signals directorate, not security. I totally bollocks that up. So thank you, um, Ross, for that. I'll start saying signals directorate. So what are, what are, hold on, I've got a microphone boom in my way. I think I might have to move to a shotgun mic because this boom is really cramping my style now. <laughs> um, let's see. All that money you spent on the Shure SMB and now you're just going to move to a boom. I know. Oh, it does look Chris. Thanks, Tom. Tom, this is 1080p. So hopefully, I mean, here, look at me. Look at me. Look at me, Tom. Look at me. But your, your, me. your stream is a little sure. pixelated. I'm the captain now. Oh, <laughs> look at missed it. I was playing my captain sound effect. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain now, Tom. Okay. So we'll figure it out. I, I've got a um I've got a capture card coming later today. I've tried like three or four different ones to, to really get a quality um stream from my camera. So we'll go from there. Let's see. I Any still other don't chat? Get it. I just wanna We're using the same one. I don't get it. See, yeah. look at this. We're using the same one, and mine is actually a little crisper than yours, so I don't understand. Is that right, guys? Is is Clint crisper than me? I, I like to be the crispy one. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't have the pixelization in the background. Who knows? All right, play, play, play. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's end the turn and hope. Guys, I have really low expectations of this uh, security model successfully defending our organization all right and and whom whoever spoke in chat about um yeah somebody mentioned yeah chad hunter chad if you're still here can you clarify on whether or not the signals directorate has additional information on how to make this work and and clint can you look through chat while i'm doing this yeah chad is also a longtime friend of threat gen by the way is he oh great He's been here since like day one of Red versus Blue. Let's see. Where's the where's the retro wave, bro? Yeah, I was doing a little roots. Can you hear it? Clint told me my music was too low. No, that was earlier. Yeah, out. now. Now I said it was too high earlier and now it's too low. All right. Okay. I got here my we go. DJ headphones so, on, so I expect good music. <laughs> yeah, let me let me let me do this. All right, so this is our essential eight that we're running on right now. I feel like we've kind of done application whitelisting, patching, configuring macros. Um, that's a really specific Microsoft Office control. Um, obviously, the Signals Directorate wants you to do this since Microsoft is in like 90% of all organizations. Um, it's not really applicable here. Clint is the crispiest. Thank you, Tom. So let's look at our uh, skill tree and see if there's anything around application hardening that we can do. Oh, we need to do a vulnerability assessment if we're going to harden our assets. Chad, so can you repost that link? I didn't see it. Yeah, let's do our vulnerability assessment, guys. All right. That's going to take $10,000, which is so expensive. And then go from there. Yeah, Chad, if you oh, repost that link, it. I'll copy it and put it as a caption so that everybody can see it. Yeah, in thank you. Channels. ASD top 35. Okay. Okay, so this is really good. Guys, I was just trying to, um, like, when I do these red versus blue streams with Clint, I, I'm, I want it to be more than just a playthrough. I want it to be interesting on learning something about a new framework or an approach to security. So, um, I'll check out this 35 one as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Toasty. toasty. That's right. Yeah, Clint's crispy. He's toasty. <laughs> Chad, I'm, you said you posted it. Chad, where are you posting it? I'm not seeing it. Is it getting blocked in YouTube? I mean, in Restream or YouTube or something? I'm he not might be posting seeing it. In, uh, he might be posting it in... Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't know where he's posting it, honestly. Thanks, Jess. Stream looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we're all 1080p now. 
Love it. Okay, so we're we're still executing on this essentially. My my analysts are all busy working, so we're gonna just end turn. Um, guys, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't see. I don't see network security anywhere in this essential aid. So we're not getting, we're not getting a firewall. Look at the skill tree guys. We're not getting a firewall, which is like, God, that's foundational. We're not getting network segmentation, which is really bad. We're not doing, um, now answers. If you look, there's nothing in here about end user awareness training. This is really focused exclusively on the endpoint. Almost like it, it should almost be called uh, um, Australian Essential Eight Endpoint Security Maturity Model. So let's keep let's keep grinding on this thing. I've got one one analyst available. Um, our next control is. Um, Application hardening. All right, so cool. Let's let's look at that. Um, we can implement SDLC. Um, we can encrypt network traffic. I mean, that's that's more at the network level, but I like the ar argument that um, it's the data going into the application. <laughs> if I can make a a stretch. Um, so let's do let's do that. Um, God, having network security is really gross. Um, all right, let's, let's encrypt network traffic. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll do USB security simply because it's endpoint focused. Hmm. Let me see this Australian S signals directorate. Um, Dad, I think you posted malware. This, this, this link is having issues. So that would be something. <laughs> I can't get it. It's it's the reason it's blocking it is because it's a direct link to a PDF, and it's just it keeps blocking it. Um, not only is Eric keep oh it's a dot it's a Microsoft Word file, so it's a link to a Microsoft Word file. So YouTube is blocking it, and so is all my security stuff. So, um, so we can't get the link to it. Interesting. So I've pulled up this top thirty-five reference card. Um, and what's interesting is of the 35, the eight are the first eight. And then, um, then they have an additional controls. Um, I'm just looking through them right now. They also seem very focused on the endpoint. Okay. Now here's user education, network encryption. Okay. So listen, team, uh, two weeks from now, I'll be going against Josh Mason, but two weeks from that, I will do the Australian 35 um controls all right so we got 24 seconds let's end the turn is it just me like or is the, or is the fact that the this standard is posted in the form of a word document concerning i mean is that just me <laughs> are you looking at the 35 um yeah this is the one that chad posted uh he sent it in the thread gen discord link um and there's, so it, folks it, did one on the 35. There, there's the PDF one. Let's see really right. quick. I want to Google image the 35. Got yeah, here. I'll I'll put that in the caption. Cool. Now I don't. It's long, so screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep grinding on this guy. Um, again, I've got low low expectations if you just by the way if you just google uh australian signals director at 35 you should get it let's look at what we're doing here uh, our our three resources are still fully committed to working so we can't really do anything so let's end the term and we lost jesus that was fast oh this this is uh i, I don't even have the um the noise for it here Fashy! No, no, no. We need to have an explosion. No, I have, I have one for this. Like just, just in case I lose. Okay. Which? Well, how about this one? I should. You lose. <laughs> I love it. What about this? There yes. you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So guys, we just got smoked 
in nine turns by the threat actor. Wait. Trying to use the Australian essentially. Yep. Fatality. <laughs> basically. Basically. <laughs> um, Jesus. That was that was awful, guys. Like that was awful. Nine turns. I mean, we started it a little late, and it was thirty minutes. Um, let's look at how the um, how the offensive team did here, right? So it looks like they had one attack, and that got them in. They were not on premise. So, Clint, based on what you see here, they had two pivots. How did they win? Damaged ICS process. So, okay, guys, look at this. They damaged the ICS process in nine turns. They had one direct cyber attack. Let Farwell. me show you that what's going on here, guys. Look at this. Look at... Here, let me view the other. Look at... They did a scan from the internet. Can I zoom Wait, in? Do we not have a firewall in place? Right, exactly. That's where I'm going. Listen... They scanned from the internet, they found some devices, and then they pivoted. Now, here's here's why it's gross. Look at my network. They came from the internet and pivoted over here and took out my ICS stuff. There is no firewall, which I knew was going to be a problem. There's no network segmentation, which I knew was going to be a problem. There was no network detection. There was no endpoint security. Like... I'm going to dispute one thing. Go ahead. And this is a this and this is a flaw in red versus blue that we're correcting. Any standard or no standard, a modern a modern network doesn't start off with some form of basic firewall on the perimeter. Um, even on the router, if it's just a router. So it's unrealistic to think that there's not even a perimeter firewall in place at all in the most basic form. So I would say even if a network or a company is not following the basic standard you know cybersecurity practices from any standard there's still going to be a firewall in place at some degree do you do you agree yeah i agree 100 percent. i mean i could almost envision um i could almost envision where you start the game with two out of three resources available and the firewall on the on the skill tree is activated yeah, I so when we're correcting that, we're going to make it to where the game starts with a default firewall. The gateway firewall is in place by default. However, I suggest you rerun it and at least put in the firewall in your first turn, just to start with. I agree. I agree 100%. I mean, I have time. I mean, we, we blocked yeah. an hour for this. Yeah, let's rerun it. Yeah. Run yeah. Again? Rerun it. All right. Spin it up, DJ. All right, here we go. Let's play again. Single player, blue team. We'll do the pipe plan again. Start the game. You guys know know what's going on. We're looking for Mario coins. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, let's do the gateway firewall, which is so fundamental. Okay, and then as I mentioned before, with the can you get rid of the hyperlink, please? Oh, sorry. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the essential eight are basic controls. I'm going to do my best to follow them. So based on that, I'm going to do policies and procedures also as part of my first move. So my three resources are committed. Let's go ahead and end the turn. And let me uh, let me change the music since we're doing a different game here. Oh, perimeter firewall installed. That's nice. What a, what a change. Okay. There we go. So now this is the real deal. Okay. <laughs> now network segmentation is still not part of the essential aid so we're not getting network segmentation okay but that's okay let us do some application hardening we need to do asset inventory in order to start getting that software inventory so let's do that this Go would be a much turn. more realistic simulation if red versus blue didn't automatically enforce prerequisites basically you just had an entire set of options to play that were categorized but no prerequisites and you could do whatever you want when you want. That would truly test these standards. Agreed. Agreed. And that would be easy. We could easily do a build for that. Okay. Well, let's let's get on it then. Create a card. On it. <laughs> Create okay, a card. So let's end our turn. Let's end our turn. We're looking for um, 
We're looking for the Mario win this time around, guys. Let's see, what is this sound effect? Okay. We need to do... Um, I've got a new sound effect, too, for you guys. Let me see if I can... There we go. What are we listening to? Lion King? Get out of here. No. The Midnight. Is it, how's Peter's the volume is gonna chat? Singing? How's the volume chat? Let, let us know or let me know because I, I control the volume. I, I'm the captain. Love it, Matthew. You can, you can, you can, RVB sure. creative mode. Oh, sorry. That's I where talked it's at, over man. your sound. That's okay. You, you do it all the time. <laughs> okay. So we finished our policies and procedures. That's dope. Okay. Major win. So now let's let's dive in here. We're still doing application hardening. Um, I'm thinking, or application whitelisting. I'm sorry. So, yeah, Alex, the yeah, exactly. Yes. That's why it would be a separate mode. Yeah, yeah, that's that scaffolding that we put in place to kind of direct you. On rails, RVB on rails, RVB on rails. Yeah. So for application whitelisting. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with this, Clint. I'm going to say that we're going to, we will install a SIM. I'm not sure I want to do it right now, but we will install a SIM um, in order to enforce that application whitelisting is happening, right? We can detect using a SIM, we can detect unauthorized applications running on our network. All right. Let's do. Um, Let's do SDLC, right? Since that's software related, and we want approved apps only. It's not exactly a one for one, but we'll, we'll do it. I think it's there we yeah, go. if you're right, it's it's close. Oh, Karen, it's not small world. Here, I, I switched the music. You guys are <laughs> tough on me. All right, asset inventory completed. All right, it's a win. All right, let's keep going. We've got one resource. <clears throat> Remember, we can look at what our what our analysts are working on and how long it's going to take them to complete it. So SDLC takes three days. So our analysts, two of them, are going to be committed for the next three days, basically through the end of the week. So let's see what we can put one analyst on for a bit. Let's see. Strong Wi-Fi. See, again, this Essential 8 that we're testing right now does not really account for network security. Okay, this is all endpoint stuff. We will be doing Essential 35 or the Australian Signals Director at 35 in four weeks' time. But for now, we're doing the Essential 8. All right, let me... This is our this. cybersecurity montage music. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. All right, so ICS safe testing methods. Um, we can't we can't do vulnerability assessments on ICS equipment until we do this part. So this is this is an in investment into ourselves long term and the sim. I'm going to do the sim guys because I feel the sim is going to allow us to enforce application whitelisting. Kind of normally you do application whitelisting at the endpoint level, but we're going to take some some liberties here. Carry. They'll break. They'll be Jerry in ten moves now. All right, threat monitoring enabled. We got this. Very nice. All right, here we go. Let's keep rolling. We've got one. Our analysts still have one more day to finish their work, so we've got to put one analyst on something. I think we're gonna do strong Wi-Fi. Okay, guys. Just because. No, that doesn't really map to application whitelisting. I'm going to do hard RDP, okay? And the argument I'm going to make here is that we're whitelisting remote access uh, softwares, right? It's not exactly a one-for-one, -one, but I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to make it okay. Okay, actually, hold on. We have to do the safe testing method too. Here we go. All right, we're at 37,500. Okay, thanks, Chad. So Chad, Chad drops a comment here that 
Um, the essential aid is really for Windows based networks and other controls should be implemented appropriately. So Chad, um, I'll definitely caveat the essential aid as I'm using it as um, not appropriate for an information security program the way that I'm using it. Okay, and so props to, Chad. Implemented... props to Chad What's for that? his knowledge on props to Chad on his, uh, for his knowledge yeah. on this um, standard because he's not even Australian. If it's the same Chad that I know, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure for I'm not sure if it's the same Chad that I referred to earlier. Could be could be a different Chad. Hunt. I mean Chad Hunter. I don't know how many Chad Hunters there are cool in this name, world. Though. Maybe a lot. I like I like that. It's cool. Name. The hunted has Sister become Christian. The yeah, we'll see. Um, okay, so we got two people. Uh, our analyst is working one more day on ICSA testing. So let's see what we can do for two people. And um, again, we're trying to adhere to this essential eight, guys. Um, let's open it up too, because Chad, correct me if it, I'm wrong, but these aren't defined in order. You should be doing these in any order, right? It's it's like do these eight. They're not sequential like CIS 18 is. So if my belief is that that's true. So let's operate under that premise that we can do any of these. So we can do backups, MFA, etc. Okay. So we got two people, three days. Let's see two factor off. Crystalline. Oh, you know it's stacking coins. Yeah, let's. I'll get into that. I'll take requests if it's the midnight. Oh my gosh! All right, hold on. All right, so I see a safe testing methods implemented. We're ready to roll, baby. Oh, cool. Does Chad? I don't know if you caught us two weeks ago, but we did CIS uh, eighteen. They, they, they collapsed two of the controls down, but now it's CIS 18. But we, we did red versus blue uh, a couple weeks ago with that, and it, it worked out pretty well. All right, so looking at my skill tree here, uh, we're still doing two FA, so we've got one out of three. Um, looking at the Australian Signals Directorate Essential 8, backups are in here, patching's in here. I would love to patch my systems. Uh, whoops. So let's check how can we... Harden and patch systems. Let's see. Let's do a vulnerability assessment. Um, ooh, vulnerability mapping. I would rather do a vulnerability assessment, honestly. That guy's going to take two more days to do. So we can do one person for two days or one person for one day, one person for one day. So let's sniff around our inventory here we go one person two days harden rdp this maps to essentially right which is application hardening control four down here so it's on the turn so that's a good point um chad said that it's kind of to make sure that your program is done but it's not necessarily sequential one two three like the cis 18 is good all right well that that takes the the shackles off us a little bit, Clint, and allows us yeah. to implement a little bit more stronger. Okay, so the all of my assets are committed. Um, one more turn for both of these. I should free up everybody, and I'll do a vulnerability assessment next turn. The shackles have been removed. Yes. Now, what sucks is there's nothing in here about endpoint detection and response, and I can't really make an argument that any of these uh, are that the only one that you can make an argument for in chat if you've got thoughts i'd love to hear it. the only one that you can make an argument for is number five restricting admin privileges technically you do that with permissions and gpos and stuff but if you put edr on you could identify privileged access that's being done um not illegally but uh with unauthorized access like privilege escalation attack or something and 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 note and, and identify it and pull it down. So if chat is comfortable uh, with, oh no problem, big fun. If if chat's comfortable with me taking the liberty to say that restricting admin privileges is require it requires EDR, then I will absolutely put. EDR. I would say EDR is more for detection, whereas right. again, 
hardening the uh, hard system hardening is going to fall into the restricting access um that when we originally designed the game the the hardware um system hardening was basically configuration hardening which also includes permissions but i i think that as we're going through these standards it's going to become prudent for us to start to separate out separate out these concepts um in terms of actions you play in game yeah i agree with you i was just trying to make an argument for for what it is hey renisha hopefully i said that right um yeah absolutely the midnight has helped me uh, quite a bit um uh, quite a bit i'll tell you what guys like i've listened to a lot of midnight clint when i was going through my phd the dissertation is an incredibly lonely arduous experience it's very very <laughs> um, mentally exhausting and there was a lot of the midnight to get so i'm going to create ir procedures since this is um it's up here daily backups so i mean i'm sorry i'm i'm thinking backups not ir procedures so we're not doing any ir stuff let's think here i still listen to the karate kid soundtracks one two and three when i'm coding is that right oh yeah nice. all those montages and you're the best around <laughs> yeah that's a good one i'll tell you it's what too music. um comeback kid the comeback kid by the midnight that song particularly resonated with me here i'll start taking some requests <laughs> looks like uh, stacking <laughs> coins had one renisha jones i'll play glory for you all right so guys we've we've got all of our people committed here we're doing a vulnerability assessment and backup process vulnerability assessment is very expensive but we're um, we're okay with that because it'll unlock everything and allow us to start patching our gear. Yeah, hey, big fun. I hope you got that Raspberry Pi sorted out. Um, the, the 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 web go um, Raspberry Pi lab. Chad right. says AV is in the thirty five, but not the top eight. Yeah. Oh, cool. Manisha's up in uh, uh, Gretchen, playing on Red versus Blue. Yeah, I've noticed we've got we've got several uh, Threat Gen players uh, here in our chat. I see nice. Alex in there That's too. Thank. By the way, Alex, thanks for all of the <laughs> typos findings. We're on those, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, I agree, Chad Hunter. We will be doing the. Um, 35 in two weeks time that'll give me enough time to read through it and, and get familiar with it guys like security awareness is in the 35 like there's a lot of basic stuff that's in the 35 that is not in the eight like i'm i'm not feeling the eight y'all all right so we've got system backups implemented some coins for that let's keep rolling we've got one analyst available for how long uh one more day this is perfect so what can we do for one day um, that would map to our, our plan? Strong Wi-Fi, that doesn't really map into the essential anyway. Um, mm -mm, nope. 2FA does, but all right. Crap. <laughs> we got to do something. Maybe you can make the argument that Maybe you can make the argument that um, even though it's not in the essential aid, if you had resources, this is a basic, right? right? So you can do things on top of it, right? So that's what, that's what I would argue. What do you think, Clint? Do you think it's cheating if I see things that are outside the essential aid have resources available? It's to cheating. Commit? It's cheating. You got to stick to the okay. plan. The, the stream is based on the plan. We're measuring Ugh. the functionality and effectiveness of the standard, as is. Okay. Okay. God dang. All right. Well, then, how about how about how about USB security, and we'll put it around application whitelisting, because if you plug in a USB yeah. and it's trying to run code that's not allowed. I agree. That's that, that would, is that 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 could be a version. We'll, we'll call that AWL based on the because the the game mechanics are giving us some problems. So we'll we'll get around game mechanics. That'll be the only rule. That's the only cheating we could do is 
fudge the game mechanics. It's not cheating. I mean, it, I, I'm saying we're making a, a uh, we're making a subjective yes, argument yeah. on whether or not it falls under. We're so interpreting. Yeah, rate. we're interpreting the game mechanics to fit the, the appropriate requirements of the standard. Okay. This one goes out to stacking coins. Stacking coins writes in what was that that um Casey Kasem used to say? Like you know, like stacking coins writes, Dear Casey. Oh, my summer yeah. love. I okay. used to oh, so I got, miss Casey Kasem. Shaggy from Scooby Doo, actually. Oh yes, that's true. It was the voice of Shaggy. Right, guys, yeah. we, 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 we finished our vulnerability assessment, guys. You know what that means? We can see our whole network. Let's 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 uh, get after it, people. This is where we're really going to start to shine. Okay, we need to harden our applications and patch our applications. So let's get busy. We're going to start with our engineering workstation since that's obviously um, a very hot place. Let's patch. We're still not going to be able to do EDR, which totally stinks. Um, let's patch our firewall and harden it. There we go. Easy turn. At least our next couple turns are going to be easy. They used to have on their website, the Australian Signals Directorate looked at every breach in Australia and found these eight controls if implemented at the time of the breach. Oh. Wow. That's Good cool. Good job, Jess. That's really cool uh, information, Chad. What happened? Jess won in six minutes? Wow. Nice, Jess. Blue or <laughs> red? Blue or it must be red, I bet. But all right, here we go. We patched our systems. We got some a ten thousand dollar bonus because we are awesome. Let's, what would be an appropriate sound effect for the bonus? There we go. Get some Mario coins. Okay. So Actually, bonus. no. You should do Randy Moss for the bonus. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, that's gonna take me a second. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's keep let's keep patching, hardening, changing default creds. Um, we're going to continue hardening over here on our network. Change default so, Jess, creds. that's fantastic. By following the Lockheed kill chain, because one of the ways that one of the things that we did when designing the red team part was we put the kill chain right at the top. So, if you follow the top line, it illustrates the kill chain. So, great job. Yeah, that is great. Oops. And I hope I hope it helped uh, teach you the kill chain, Jess. If you, if you didn't know it, I mean, if you did already know it, um, then awesome to, you know, have that kind of um, tactile use of it to, to kind of ingrain it in you. All right, so we have all of our actions queued up, so we're going to end our turn. Let's see. Let's see, 27, system hardened. Okay, great. Guys, we're just going to keep hardening our, our systems here. Um, I want to keep it to the ICS side first. System hardening, system patching, system patching. We're going buck wild up in here. Now, granted, there's no EDR here, guys, so things could be compromised. We have no clue. All right, asset out of service. That's not good. What's a good... Uh, what's a good... Uh, what is it? <laughs> We'll do that. We'll do that. All right. So, what is out of service? Ooh, I just patched did, this thing too. Did you just do a? Did you just patch it, or did you just do a, a vulnerability assessment? I patched it. Then you probably did that on your own. Let's see. You applied a patch that wasn't oh. certified by the vendor. Oh, so let's 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 do vendor certification. I mean, that's not part of the CISA. I mean, not this. I see. That's not part of the, the the standards. But this is for IT, not for um, industrial. But I think that's a great point. Is that the standards that are not industrially based are not going to prevent things like this? Yes, that's a great point. Very good point. So I'm going to reboot this asset because I'm a fool and knocked over myself. All right, here we go. Asset rebooted. And by the way, just to throw back to when we got this. Um, Budget. There you go. There All right, let's keep let's keep rolling. We're looking at the Australian Signals Director at Essential Eight. 
and testing it in the red versus blue simulation platform. We got smoked on the first one, so we made a, an exception and installed the gateway firewall. We're going to keep working on patching. I can't touch my ICS stuff until I... Um, is this a switch? I can patch this, right? All right. Come on. PCS historian. No patching there. Patching and hardening. I also want to look at the DC and patch that. The file server. Patch that. And the mail server. Uh, I want to patch. I don't want to. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I'm out of assets. Okay, cool. All right. Let's end the turn. Yeah. All right. Asset rebooted. At, all right. So nothing really happened there. We're just continuing to patch our gear. Um, pleaded the, the ability to. ICS vendor certification. Now we can we can scan and patch our stuff, which is awesome. Um, let me see. Patch. Oh, change default creds. I got to do that. That's not good. Implement strong Wi-Fi and harden. Hmm. These hardens are expensive. Okay, let's end the turn. I'm just going around my network and patching and patching it all up. There we go. Yeah, oh, let's do it. Do a shout out to um, Renisha Jones <clears throat> playing Gloria here. Okay, guys, we got three people. Let's continue the patch train. Okay, patch, 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 and. and I'm being a little flippant about what I'm choosing to patch in what order. Normally, I would focus on mission critical assets before I did endpoint workstations, but you know. Now, Clint, what are we looking at here? This has a weak password, but I can't, I can't harden this system. I can't do. I can't see the control four. I know, but I can't do control four. I can't fix weak oh. passwords. Oh. Um. Control four is. Application hardening. I would say that's your SD. So control four is SDLC and or system hardening. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. I can't change default password on this system because I don't have the ability to do it. So there oh, must be no. That, well, that's not. A, that's a weak password, not a default password and you have to you have to enforce strong passwords yeah so I'll, I'll that's what i'll do but to me that's hardening right if it has a weak password i i, I mean yeah. i would still say that's a g that's a gpo that's a policy you're in for in order to prevent weak passwords or to have a weak password, you tell them to change their password but you have to enforce strong passwords i think okay it's middle ground between gpo and system hardening Right, but for the sake of this discussion, are we willing is 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 the you're, you're the judge, I guess. Are we willing to accept that changing weak passwords or enforcing strong passwords would would equate to application hardening? Yes, that's. I, I'll allow, I will allow it because it, it maybe it's a it's a, yeah, fine. All I right. think it's. Well, then I'm gonna do what is it? Strong passwords, perfect. All right, so let's do that, and then let's keep patching stuff. I think we've done all the patching. So now it's we have to do the... Um, I think we've done all the patching. So now we need to do system hardening and update AV. Crap. Okay, let's... Let's keep let's keep doing it then. Let's let's start hardening. Okay. It's gonna take oh. all right. Not good. Yep, Not good. There we go. We lost. Let me let me do this. Let me do it. Guys. Fatality. <laughs> all right, so let's investigate what happened and what went wrong, okay? Let me let me let me look at this really quickly. 
Hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this for you guys really quick, right? Here we go. There you go. All right. So let's look what happened. They damaged the ICS process again. Let's see what happened. Social engineering attacks. Three out of six. They were successful. USB drops, so they went with the USB. It looks like they had four pivots. So, Clint, based on what I'm seeing, I got absolutely manhandled. They physically intruded, dropped a bunch of USB drives. For some reason, yep. they had four pivots, which I don't even think they needed. Oof, they owned my file server. They owned the PC historian. They owned this um, SCPCS, whatever that is. They were on the perimeter, and they got right here. This device. Now, here's oh. something interesting, y'all. Here's something interesting. Wow. This thing had a bunch of zero days and a week passwords. Um, so, guys, just to point out, we're, we were testing the essential eight security controls from the Australian Signals Directory. I was following these as best as I can, including hardening, but none of these controls include network security or security operations content, which includes like detection and incident response. And I think what happened here, if you look at what, what happened, they literally came on site and then started pivoting around the environment because I didn't have endpoint detection and response. I had, this happens in real life too, guys. I I had I had a sim, but I didn't have endpoint detection and response, and maybe it wasn't configured properly. These these guys just walked right in and got right to our ICS and basically um, nuked us from orbit. So not a good day for for uh, the blue team. We lost twice to the same. No, it doesn't, Christopher. Essential 8 is, is this. And Chad Hunter put this in chat. The Essential 8 really looks like it's focused exclusively on the endpoint and almost exclusively on Microsoft Windows endpoints. So we're not talking servers necessarily. We're definitely not talking network security. It, it's really just the endpoint. And I don't know, Clint. I mean, it's kind of... Chad said that this was based on an analysis in Australia by the government to say if these eight controls are put in place, 95% of all attacks that were experienced in a certain time range would have been prevented. There's no anti-malware on the, there's no install anti-malware. There's no install endpoint detection response. Yeah. There's no I, yeah. training. I there's disagree. Major that, gaps here. Yeah, there's major gaps. I even looking at this thing now when you put it into context i would have said this is an ineffective security standard um even as a guideline just for the basic eight i think it's missing some essential things that needs to it needs to be at least be 10 because there's at least two more things that i would say you need to put in uh number one network segmentation number two basic antivirus kind of stuff and, and malware control i mean this is and and red versus blue just proved it you got zonked twice twice mm -hmm. with a fatality <laughs> yes exactly exactly let me let me bring this up really quick on screen let me let me do this one second let me exit um let me do this really quick on on screen for you guys this might be a little bit of an eyesore yeah but Ow. you can see this is the australian signals director at 35 and what they've done here is you'll notice that the first eight are the same eight that we've been looking at configure application um mfa and then they start getting in additional ones web content filtering deny um corporate computers access to the internet so now we're getting a little bit more into the network area but you can see antiviruses here removable media like usb devices we get into email security and then finally, way down here, user education, anti-malware, network encryption. So, you know, I'd be curious what data they base this off of. Honestly, I feel like this is um, not the best approach based on my professional experience. Um, 
and again, I, but, I don't think that the 35 is sequential either or or prior. You know, I don't think it's prioritized by order. I think it's just saying you have to have these. According to what Chad was saying, if 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 the same logic from the eight applies to the thirty-five, yeah, exactly. And uh, if you're still with us, I saw Jamie commented that he didn't care for the music. That's cool, no no big deal. Um, the threat gen red versus blue portal does have its own music. I just opt to stream uh, retro synthwave while while playing. <laughs> so I'll just get my sound. Way, yeah, Christopher, that's not a sound bite. I'm actually. Using my effects for fatality. <laughs> yes, uh, I I have this one as well. Uh, like so, the the Super Mario Brothers dying is for when I lose, but for um, getting compromised or having to activate IR, we also have. Yeah. So we'll get the soundboard uh, straightened out, guys. Really appreciate it. If you're interested. Um, Clint, you want to, um, you know, we've got the social handles up here. Obviously, if you got value out of this, would really appreciate a like, a thumbs up or whatever it is. If you want, we're doing this every Wednesday. Um, the, you know, the best way to say, hey, I like it is to hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're over on the Threat Gen channel watching this right now, we are um, broadcasting on the Simply Cyber channels as well. But it's easy enough to go to YouTube and type in Threat Gen. Uh, go to the channel and hit subscribe. We appreciate it. It definitely goes a long way in letting us know that you like this content um, versus, you know, not doing it. Uh, if you are interested in the actual game that we are playing, the portal, um, go over to threatgen.com. You can check it out. I know there's a bunch of you who are in stream right now that have access to the portal and have been playing it. Love seeing that. Um, like I said, we're going to start doing heads up play. I played against Clint not too long ago. I'll be playing against Josh Mason uh, in two weeks time. We're going to continue doing uh, different frameworks and, and um, you know, testing them in a simulated environment. Obviously, the Australian Essential 8 did not fare well, and we gave it we gave it an honest shot. I'd argue, Clint. Yeah, I mean. I think we gave it on a shot and and even limitations of the mechanics aside which i really think we can start to uh fix that moving forward with other standards um i, I don't think it holds up regardless agreed but in in uh stay tuned because in uh, the end of may like four weeks time from now whenever that is i'll do the Aus uh, australian signals director at 35 and i'll and i will try to do it in a way that um based on the effectiveness of what they're saying. Okay. So they have user awareness training in there, but it's, it's pushed down. So I'll use it as a tiered grade, right? I'll do the essential controls first, then the excellent controls, then the very good controls and so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll give, we'll give Australia a second chance uh, to get in the ring and, and battle against <laughs> the AI and see what happens. You know, I think that's what we, we should, we should label it that kind of like we're doing like, you know, uh, jury, versus josh mason you know jerry reigning champion versus josh uh, josh mason uh and uh, you know and yes i concede you are the reigning champion um but the, you okay. know we should we should also do you know red versus blue uh or re yeah, red versus blue versus the cis 18 red versus blue versus the cybersecurity framework you know uh pitting red versus blue against the standards that's that's kind of a cool concept you thought awesome it. it's well, all yours yeah yeah thanks i i love uh cybersecurity so it's it this is fun for me like best job ever <laughs> so all right guys that's going to do it for us head on over to the portal if you want more information hit subscribe if you want to be a member of the threat gen um community and be made aware when we go live and do stuff like that and other than that we will see you guys um next time take care everyone